Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So, Side Effects is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. Good news, I'm alive. So, today is not day 22. Oh, today is actually after Hulai, but um, I've decided to finish the series. So I'll keep these ones brief. Um, anything where I think it's a bit of a cool setup, I might spend a bit more time on, but I'm just gonna go straight through these and then get straight back into tutorials and all sorts of other fun content. But um, yeah, for anyone who wants to see all of the entries, I am going to be putting everything up. So here we go, Sky. Um, just so you know, spoiler alert, I don't win any of the ones between now and the end of the week. I don't win any world's entries. However, Waterway and Ancient, um, even Underground, they weren't bad. Uh, they just weren't good enough. But uh, Sky was a bit of a mess. So I'll show you what I did for Sky. Right, so what I ended up with for Sky was this little hot air balloon kind of flying through the clouds and it all looks very surreal. Now I can show you, I had like four different files. You can see a day 22 Sky, Sky Balloon, Sky Cloud Gen, Sky Wheat. I was trying everything, like I had wheat fields and um, I had a dragon in the sky. Like it was, there was a lot going on, but none of it really worked. So the only thing that I want to show you is just the way that I set up the clouds. So over here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of these cloud systems that I've made. Now, would I recommend making something like this? Yes. Would I recommend making it the way I made it? No, I did a bad job. <laughs> these are these are terrible little tools. Um, I mean, this is kind of cool, I guess. If you, so I can draw a shape like that. And then whatever shape I draw gets converted to a mesh, right? And I can use that as a cloud. So I can show you that. That's kind of interesting. So you draw a curve, gets fed into the subnet, everything gets fused together and resampled. I polyfill it, then extrude it up. Um, add normals to that. VDB from polygons, convert it, transform it, right? You have a, a cloud shape. Now, that alone isn't good enough. So that goes into a cloud gen that I made. So when you use the cloud gen, it gives you nice little poofy clouds, right? And there's some noise and variation, and it looks pretty good over here, but it didn't look great when I rendered it, largely because of my render settings, actually. It wasn't really the cloud setup that was that bad, but my render settings were a bit wonky. But over here, I have a whole bunch of settings and things. This is basically an HDA. If you go inside, um, it converts to clouds, right, based on some uniform sampling that you can give from up here. So uniform sampling over there also gets multiplied by a global controller. So if I want um, want to do like tests, then I can just drop this to like 0.5 and you can see the clouds drop in resolution. Um, and so that applies to every one of these cloud gems. So that's kind of cool. 
you basically just copy that parameter and paste relative references everywhere. And that's kind of how you make an HDA. And then there's density multipliers, noise multipliers. But then this over here is kind of cool, this reshaping. So this is linked to the last part over here, this reshaper node. And I don't want to take credit for this. I think, I think it was Rohan Dalvi. I watched a video where he did this, where you do this vector pause um, rel b box. So this creates a relative bounding box. So you create a bounding box around your density. And then you multiply your density by channel ramps that are driven by this position on each axis. So what this allows is really nice tapering off. So if I go up a level, I can show you, say you want to taper it off on X. All right, you see that over there? As you move this closer to the side, it kind of eats it away. And so the density is controlled by this and it's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, shout out to Rohan Dalvi. I do believe it's his setup, but I'm not, I might be wrong. Also, I tried something where it switches between different inputs with the switch node over here, and each one is like a different type of cloud. And I achieved this basically just with different types of noises over here. So like multiplying my call noises here. Um, this one I multiplied by a Wally and multiplied by a curl noise, but had higher frequency on Y. So all of that just allows me to make different types of clouds. Um, so fun fact about clouds. It's probably the only thing that I know about clouds. So a long time ago, there was a British scientist called Luke Howard, and he came up with all of the classifications of clouds that we know today. I would give you an example of them, but I don't know them. I think it's like a cirrus cloud. I think that's like the, the sheet type cloud. But anyways, before him, there were 10, I think, 10 classifications of clouds going from zero to nine. Number nine was the cumulonimbus, the big poofy like sheep looking cloud, the one that looks like you could just kind of jump into it and go poof. And so that's actually where the phrase comes from, you know, on cloud nine, it's cloud number nine of the original classifications of clouds. Cloud nine was the poofiest, happiest looking cloud. So if you're on cloud nine, you're on the poofiest, happiest looking cloud. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you because there's nothing really going on in the setup. I thought I could fill it with some, some, some cloud trivia and it switches between the types of clouds. So does it work well? Not really, um, oh, but it could work well. It could be very cool. If you spend like some time on this, I'm sure it could be really interesting. You could, you could have all sorts of different, um, cloud gen. I, I spend most of my time trying to figure out how to make this one. Um, the cumulonimbus, right? So input zero for this. It's the side over here. But um, if you were determined, you could do it for all of them. You could have a really, really nice cloud HDA. And I'm sure you could even probably sell it if you had to make it really good. But anyways, what I do with that is I create all of my clouds, right? And you can see them all over there. And so I place them all into the scene. The only other thing is in the material network, you'll notice that I have cloud dense. Over here, it's just um, a scatter coefficient and an absorption coefficient. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. So scatter coefficient is basically how bright the cloud is. Absorption coefficient is basically how opaque it is. So between these two, you know, you can define how light and fluffy your clouds are. But I made the mistake of pushing up my scatter coefficient and absorption coefficient too high. So my clouds just looked chunky. They didn't look soft. Um, it looked more like cottage cheese, which isn't, isn't pleasant for a cloud. So yeah, other than that, just the basic little hot air balloon. You can see I didn't even um, add ridges onto the other side. That's how rushed this last little bit was. I just kind of did one side of it. So yeah, that's it. Nothing crazy going on here. The final result looks like this. And in post, you can see, okay, so <laughs> you can see how bad these clouds look, right? Um, this would have looked way, way, way better if I considered absorption coefficient and scatter coefficient and worked on some finer noise all of my scales are off but anyways i didn't have time to really sort it out so just with a lot some post-processing um decreasing the form iso adding some lens flare and some blur on the highlight you end up with that sharpen it um grain to it and you end up with that it doesn't look terrible but yeah there was a lot of room for improvement here which I am currently redeeming myself on with another project. I'm currently making some nice looking clouds. So looking back at this is a humbling. You can actually see the voxels in my clouds. So yeah, moral of the story, don't make cottage cheese clouds. They don't look good.
I will see you tomorrow or later um, with the next part, part 23. That'll be Waterway. I think it's Waterway. Hope to see you there. Bye.